Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I will share how to create sunlight rays, inspired by a video from Second Crop Creative. A link to that video will be in the description. Before I get started, I just wanted to let you know that I will be applying a lot of different techniques and you might feel I go too fast. Just let me know in the comments which techniques would need their own video. Anyway, enough talking, let's get started. This image of a shark will be our starting point, and this will be the end result. If you look at the channels panel of the final image, it looks complicated and a lot of work, but if we go through them step by step, it is actually not that complicated. Let's go back to our starting image. This is currently a landscape image, but I'm going to transform it to a portrait format allowing us to have longer light rays. By using the crop tool, I will adjust the canvas size to a portrait. Let's crop it in a way that the shark will be nicely centered at the bottom half of the image. Now we have these blank areas. The best way to fill them is using the in-paint fill. Before I do that, let me duplicate the original layer first. Move it to the top and rasterize it. The in-paint fill always works with the pixel layers and secondly, it's always a good idea to have a backup of the original image. First, I will start with the top part. Important here is to also select a small portion of the existing background so the in-paint can do its job. From the edit menu, I will select in-paint and give it a second to do its job. Excellent, looks great. Let me repeat the same steps for the bottom part. Well done in paint, you really did a good job. Thank you Affinity. Next step is to create a light source, as if there is a light coming from above the water surface. I will add a rectangle, then convert it to curves so I can adjust its shape. This will resemble our light coming from above. So, the light source is narrow at the top and it broadens as it travels down. Looks good for now. We got the shape of the light coming down. Now we need to give it the effect that this feels like a light source. An easy way to do that is adding a brightness and contrast adjustment and brightening things up considerably. You might have guessed, the shape we created will be the filter for this adjustment. Let me nest the curve of the light shape to the adjustment. Yep. That did the trick. Now it looks a little bit too harsh. Let's soften it by a Gaussian blur. Before I increase the blur, I need to make the blur a child of the shape so it only applies to the shape. Time to max the blur. Wonderful. This is already looking amazing. I'm now going to adjust the light shape. For this, I will zoom out as this gives a better overview on how the light enters the composition. Okay. This feels right for me. Let's zoom back a bit. I want to make the line be more gradual. To achieve this, I'm going to add a mask and use a gradient fill on the mask. The mask will then gradually filter out the effect. Again, a bit of zooming out and zooming in to see how the gradient works. As you can see, I'm adjusting the position of the gradient to get a more natural blend. Once ready with the gradient, a small adjustment on the opacity will make it look better. This looks good, but there's an issue. The sides on the top are actually too bright. To fix this, I'm going to draw two shapes over these areas, which will act as masks. Now, to darken things up, I will add a brightness and contrast and lower the values. Before I add the two shapes as a mask, I will make one curve out of them by using the geometry add function. Awesome, this shape will now be the mask for the darkening adjustment. Also, as just before, a mask with a gradient to slowly blend it in from the top. To smoothen everything up, you guessed it right, a Gaussian blur. As the Gaussian blur introduces some halos on the outer part of the image, I will increase the shape size so the halos are not visible anymore. Almost done. A little bit of tweaking in the opacity. Well, still not happy with the end result. Anyway, 
Just the old painting brush will save the day. I will add a curves layer to darken things up and invert its mask. Now I can paint in the dark areas as I please. A little bit painting here and there and now I'm happy. The base for the light rays is ready. Time to add the rays. The light rays will be created by using a conical fill. So first I will add the circle and apply the conical fill. After adjusting its blend mode to color dodge, you notice that this already gives a nice glow effect. Next step is to move the fill center to the top and add points alternating with light gray and black. We're almost there, just a couple of more points, some fine tuning in adjusting the positions of the points to get some cool rays. As you can see, by adjusting the darkness or lightness and repositioning the dots on the conical fill, we get pretty amazing light rays. Once we're happy with our light rays, next step is to make it blend in the composition. The first thing to achieve that is to mask out some areas, especially on the sides and on the bottom. To control the strength of the light rays, I can add a levels adjustment. Perfect. Now let me zoom out again and reposition the light rays. For a little bit more control on the strength of the light rays, I can add an HSL adjustment to fine tune its strength. To give a bit more dynamics to the composition, let's copy the light rays layer and adjust the rays in color and position. Pretty amazing. What can we do more? Let me adjust the blend ranges of the second light ray so it blends in differently with the original light ray to make things a little bit more organic. Also, some small adjustment in the HSL will help to differentiate it. You could say we're done, but we can make it a little bit more realistic by adding a texture with small particles, so it feels like there's plankton or other small fish floating in the sea. I will drag a texture on the image and move it to the top. Change the opacity to make it more natural. Another cool trick you can apply is to darken some areas of the composition. To achieve this, I will go to the background layer and from the channels create a selection of the blue channel. When I now add a curves layer, the curves layer will have a mask. I will invert the mask of the curves layer and adjust the curves to make it a bit darker at the bottom. This makes a subtle difference, but it gives definitely a little bit more depth to the image. And that's it for this video. Let's have a quick look to remind us where we started. Pretty awesome. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. Have a nice day.